Send them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, God Almighty, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same spirit, help us to release Release what is right and relish in what is white and right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask these things through Christ our Lord and all God's children say. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, I I want you to listen to the story of a, a dear priest friend of mine. He says, it was one of the most confusing and disconcerting time moments in my life. I had moved from one community house to another and proceeded to rearrange the furniture. I put my books and put my clothes into the closet. I had to leave after a day or two for a week-long trip. And so when I returned late Friday night and I entered my room, I couldn't recognize it. I made sure the key opened the right door. It was my room, all right, he said, but everything has been rearranged differently than when I had left. I opened the the desk drawer, and yes, my stuff was in the drawer, he says. I opened the closet, yes, they were my clothes, but nothing was where I had left it. I spent the weekend wondering how much of my mind I was losing until I talked to the housekeeper on Monday, and she was so happy for me to move in, she decided to do me a favor and fix my room up for me. My room would be better her way. I don't know if we have any priests in here, but we have some religious who sometimes our sisters or our brothers tend to touch our things, and we put it in a a particular spot, right, Brother Kersey? And then somebody messes it up, and you're like, I know I'm not the crazy one. Turn to your neighbor, put a smile on your face, and you know we don't do any fake smiles here, so make it count, and say, don't rock the boat. In a minute, my sisters and brothers, you'll get, you'll get what, why I said that. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as the work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ and into union with other believers in the body of of Christ at the moment of salvation. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was predicted by John the Baptist in Mark chapter 1, verse 8, and by Jesus before he ascended to heaven. And I quote, For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. This promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, for the first time, people were permanently present in the Holy Spirit, and the church had begun. My sisters and brothers in Christ, to me, that seems nice. That seems something like something that I would like to to be in for forever until death. But it's not always easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't need grace. If it was easy, we wouldn't need mercy. If it was easy, we wouldn't need reconciliation. And church, I don't know about you, but I thank God for his graces in my life. But if we're going to be honest, and you know I like to be honest, we don't do things, we don't like things turned upside down. We don't like things changed. We don't want to go anyone's way but my way. We like things predictable and under our control. We want to micromanage God. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't get it twisted. But what happens, what happens when Jesus enters into our world? What happens when we earnestly desire like our Lord earnestly desires for us? What happens if we strive? What happens when, when he sends the Holy Spirit upon us? What happens if we embrace the Spirit of God with every fiber of our being? When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. 
I will sing, I will sing, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. Like David sang. We can feel that in Acts chapter 2, the first reading for this Sunday, just in case if we get a little too lazy to go to Mass. I'm not calling anybody out, but if you can't say amen, somebody say ouch. ouch. I say feel because so much is happening in the scene between the wind and tongues of fire, this new way of communicating. And this recognition that we are all brothers and sisters in the same grace. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are my brother or my sister, depending on who you look at. We are all brothers and sisters in the same grace that God had broken the boundaries for us, between us, strictly out of love. God broke the boundaries of death. God broke the boundaries of hell just for us out of love. Amen, church. Amen. Just want to make sure that I don't get kicked out for saying anything outside the walls of the church. I still fear the sisters. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sisters. So what do we do with this scene from Pentecost? Our world is still more, much more comfortable when we can be on our own, have the rules of our own group to follow, and, and speak our own language. We don't want to care about anybody else. We don't care about the beggar on the street. We don't care about the young lady who was raped. We don't care about the young lady who, who was pregnant and is trying to figure out all the mess that's going on in her life. We don't care about the young man who's been abused. We don't care about the priest who's just going through a whole lot of drama. We just want our mass, our way, our Christianity, our way, our Catholicism, our way. It doesn't matter what God wants. We don't want any change. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is to say the Spirit of Jesus, comes precisely to, to break us out of the modes we have formed for ourselves or the modes that have formed around us and bring us, whether it's kicking and screaming or both, into a world that God has destined, destined at the beginning of time just for us. We have two options. We can either live right and live with God or we can be that stubborn and spend eternity without God and we know what that place is. Amen? So I don't know about you, my sisters and brothers, but I'm going to strive. I'm going to strive to reach that goal. I'm going to strive to reach my full potential in Christ Jesus. For it is by our baptism as Catholics, we believe that we are all baptized as priests, prophet, and king. And so every day, as long as I have breath, I am going to spread this message of God. For when God fills me with grace, it is an obligation that we have to fill others with that overflow. Pentecost, my sisters and brothers, wants to be a new creation, at least a new starting point. So much of past human experience have been each one trying on his own, trying to do things by himself, building walls instead of tearing them down. Too many times we, we don't build enough bridges for the people who are sinking. We need to, as Father Greg Boyle says, draw circles of inclusion instead of lines of exclusion. For if we truly believe that Genesis is the breaking apart of fundamental relationships, Pentecost is their restoration. And if Babel shows how humans cannot communicate with each other, Pentecost gives us the new common language of love. Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Then as God breathed into Adam, Jesus breathed his breath 
and to his disciples. Receive the Holy Spirit. As I am reconciled with you, you are to bring reconciliation to the world. As I am reconciled with you, you are to bring reconciliation to the world. As I am reconciled with you, you are to bring reconciliation to the world. As God's spirit lives within me, so I pass that same spirit to you. As creation had its first dawn, so I bring you a dawn of new life, full life, unending life, life with God to reach true satisfaction. And so my sisters and brothers, again, I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit. But, 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 but no, church, when Jesus comes into your life, he makes you new. That means, which, which means stop, see, you have to stop saying all those old lies. You, you have to start speaking truth. You have to start giving praise to God, not only on your good days, but also in your bad days. Church, the Spirit wants to talk through you, so that means sometimes you just have to be quiet. And, but if you don't say anything, when the Spirit is ready, he can't speak through you. But when he talks, when the spirit talks through you, you know it because it comes from deep down inside. Unfortunately, church, we've all gotten a little lazy. We become folk that don't want to put in the work and just wait to hear the voice of God. We've just become a people that don't want to wait until God completes his work. When you've got the spirit of God way down deep inside of your belly, it will flow like a river of living water. Sometimes, church, all we have to do is wait. When Jesus says, peace be with you, he's not saying that so that you can get antsy. He's saying, my peace, my calmness, my serenity is with you. Be not afraid. For now my spirit is dwelling with you everywhere you go. Think of all the pains in your life. And remember he was wounded for our transgressions. And that he was bruised for our iniquities. And it is with his stripes, scripture says, we are healed. And so my sisters and brothers, I ask you to reach out to somebody, grab somebody by the hand, touch them on the shoulder. That means we reach out and grab somebody and, <laughs> and, and, and touch somebody. And tell them that the Spirit of God is in here, in this room. And when the Spirit desires a dwelling place in you, He's not going to stop bugging you because the spirit wants to be, because we need to be filled. We need to be covered. We need to be anointed. We need to be rejoiceful because we have been appointed by our Lord Jesus Christ. To preach his message of love. To preach his message of forgiveness. To, get, to preach his message of peace and joy. To every single person. We come across in our daily lives. That is our commandment. And so my sisters and brothers. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David dance I will dance I will dance I will
will dance like David dance. I will dance. I will dance. I will dance like David dance. Why, though, church? I'm going to tell you why I'm going to have to continue dancing. I'm going to have to continue singing. I'm going to have to continue doing this ministry that I'm in because I cannot function without the grace and love of God in my life. I've tried it. And it failed miserably. The kids say it was an epic fail. My goddaughter say, would say that fail was sus, you know? I don't even know what sus means. <laughs> But it's an epic fail without the love and mercy of God in my life. And so today, at the dawn of Pentecost, we, we commemorate and we recognize what happened to the disciples can happen to us every single day when we come into these places or even when we're alone, when we invoke the Spirit of the Lord to come upon me, when we invoke the Spirit of the Lord to change me, when we invoke the Spirit of the Lord to make us new, your life, our lives, will never be the same. Amen. And you may want to try going back to the old ways. But child, you will miss. You will miss the, uh, the joyous adventure. You will miss the uh, joyful, expectant uh, 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 deliverance that God can do in you, through you, and for you without him in your life. All God is saying to you, as he said to his friends at the Last Supper, I earnestly desire to be with you. And all we have to say is, Lord, I'm ready. I am here. Send your anointing upon me. Lord, I'm not ready for things to get shaky in my life, but I am putting them in your hands because there is nothing that you cannot do. Whenever I'm, I'm at Sower, for whatever reason, it, the story of the three Hebrew boys always gets put back on my heart. And if you don't know the story of the three Hebrew boys, I ask you and I encourage you to to look it up, the book of Kings. Unfortunately, I can only give you a brief, <clears throat> a brief synopsis, so please just bear with me. There were these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> he was. <clears throat> And they were spreading this message of, of God. You got me, Deacon. You can't do that no more. <laughs> they were spreading the message of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Moses. And the king said, well, you need to stop or I'm going to have to kill you. And they said, all right, we're gonna, you, you, you let us leave today. We're going to go back, spread the message of God. And so the king finally captured them and they said, I'll give you this last time to, for you to praise my God and live. And they said, no. And so the king said, I'm going to put you in the fiery furnace. And he told his attendants to turn up the, the furnace seven times hotter than it usually is. And the servants who were on the outside, all of them got burned. And miraculously, they're dancing, they're praising God. The three Hebrew boys are saying, earth and wind, praise the God, praise the Lord. I know the sisters know it from the Psalms. Wind and fire, praise the Lord. Hail, snow and winds, praise the Lord. They're in there praising God in the midst when, when, it, when, when it couldn't get any worse than that. Sometimes, church, our lives can seem as if we're just in a fiery furnace. And sometimes it feels as if God is not there. And sometimes it feels as if we're not going to make it through. So they were praising God in the middle of the fire, and the king said, why are they not dead? There is a fourth person sitting there with them in the midst of the fire, and scripture says, not a hair on their head was singed, not any fabric of clothing was burned. They came out 
with a different walk, the same talk, praising God, thanking him for putting us into this situation to bring us out, to glorify your name forevermore. My sisters and brothers, I'm here to tell you, even in the midst of your mess, I urge you to allow the spirit of the Lord to fall fresh on you so that you may be encompassed with God's love and mercy and his grace and his strength for your journey. I encourage you these next three days to dive deep, to dive deep in prayer, invoking the spirit of, the God, of, the, of our Lord to come upon you, to change the things that need to be changed, to comfort the things about you that need to be comforted, to give you some tough love for the thing that you need some tough love, because sometimes, church, we do need a little tough love. It's not always going to be nice and pretty. If we can put in the work so that God can work in us for our sisters and brothers, our lives will be changed. And we will one day speak that same message of love, the love that Jesus pours us with daily, that overflow of love so we can then pour that same love into our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. And so no matter what, if anybody asks me who I am, for those reasons, I'm going to tell them that I'm a child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do right now is Roca Fuerte is going to play some music for us. And